As a control engineer, you know about the challenges that today's industrial automation systems are facing, such as enhancing reliability, lowering plant expenses, maintaining continuous operation, and preserving steady product quality, among the others. So, you can put your trust in a powerful, versatile, safe process control technology that can maximize production asset utilization to get higher efficiency, which is called DCS. DCS is short for Distributed Control System, but as its term is developed over time, nowadays the DCS is known as Decentralized Control System. Usually, these terms are used interchangeably. At the high-level view, the DCS is a computerized control system that coordinates and monitors a whole process or factory that consists of many autonomous controllers deployed across a facility that can handle many continuous operations with lots of analog signals and intricate PID control loops. DCS is well known in the continuous manufacturing processes such as petrochemicals, nuclear power plants, water management systems, food and beverage manufacturing, fertilizers, and automobile industries, among the others. Now that we have touched on the DCS definition, it's time to focus on the DCS architecture. Imagine the following illustration as a hierarchical pyramid, so you can get a better understanding of the DCS components. A typical facility starts with the Integrated Operator Control Center, often referred to as Operator Station, which is the heart of the system. Here is where you can visualize the whole industrial process control, or in other words, what's going on in the entire factory. In this control room, operators can monitor the process control, observe operations, warnings and alarms, and control values of the plant process parameters to take appropriate control actions accordingly. If the operator station is a single unit, it runs tasks such as displaying parameters values, presenting trends, and alerting operators on one computer. But with multiple units, each computer does the individual function separately. In the next level of components, we find the server, archiving computer, and designing station. Typically, industrial Ethernet is used as a communication protocol between this level and the operator stations. Let's find out the purpose of using this server. The server is responsible for collecting data at the controller level. Its main task is to transfer data between the controllers and the operator stations. It's interesting to note that if the OPC server is used in our system, we can exchange the DCS data with any third-party devices that need the process control information. Archiving computers, often known as storage computers or historians, are used to retain historical plan data such as control parameters and technical specifications. For example, if you want to know the process parameters back in 10 years, you will need the archiving computers for that. In designing a station or engineering a station, we can create the projects that the processes will run on, such as hardware configurations, task-based logic for PLCs, interactive graphical displays of operator stations, network setup, etc. We can administrate all of these engineering functions by installed software packages. Then we will download these projects to the controllers, servers, and operator stations. We find the master controllers and supervision and command units in the next level. Commonly, we use industrial Ethernet to communicate with the previous level. Controllers or process stations are in charge of supervising and operating the separate processes. They acquire input signals measured by sensors, analyze the information based on the logic implemented, and finally generate output signals to control the actuators. At last, the controllers will transfer data to the server, which provide images for operator stations, store data in archiving computer, and assist with programming and debugging in the designing station. What about the supervision and command units? Each process area is controlled and supervised by operators through human-machine interfaces, or HMIs. 
To measure and control the different parameters in industrial processes, we need instrumentations like sensors and actuators located at the field device level. This level also includes distributed or remote IOs that can sense and control digital and analog signals by their IO modules. The field devices and the controllers can communicate using almost any protocol compatible with the components, such as industrial Ethernet or Profinet, Profibus, etc. Now let's discuss the DCS features in the last segment of this video. Each section of a DCS system has its own dedicated controller that works autonomously. There would be two CPUs instead of one in a DCS control cabinet. One is our primary CPU, while the other is a redundant CPU. If the main CPU fails for whatever reason, we have a redundant CPU to take over. If in a scenario the redundant CPU fails as well, only that section of the plant's operation would be affected, and the rest of the areas will continue to operate without interruption. Because a DCS takes a lot of time to analyze data, which is due to its process of high-level programming languages, it is not the best choice when response times are crucial. DCS is a scalable platform, which means it can handle newly installed equipment and data integration to unify the whole control system. Also, when the process is complicated and requires frequent modifications, a DCS is the best answer. And at last, relying on DCS will increase the system safety because the manufacturer provides both the control and monitoring equipment as an integrated package, which minimizes the chances of integration faults. Yoohoo! Congratulations! Now you are familiar with almost every aspect of the DCS. If you have a unique experience working with DCS, please share it with us in the comment section. Also, if you found this video helpful, please encourage us by liking the video, subscribing to our channel, and pressing the bell icon so you can get notifications whenever we publish new out-of-the-oven videos. This way, you keep motivating us to produce more informative videos.